actually colonizes the bag in about two weeks. Once it turns nice and white and hard, it's ready to come out of the bag. And when it comes out of the bag, it goes to a different process called browning where the, the crust is put on. Once the crust starts to split and star, that's where the that's where the mushrooms are going to come out of. They get soaked for uh, eight to twelve hours. Um, after they're soaked, they're put on a bed, a mushroom growing bed in a house. It's uh, kept at about 62 degrees, humidity in the air, and in about 12 to 14 days, you'll have a log full of uh, mushrooms. And that can be done as long as the, the uh, log is healthy. That can be done three, four, five times. So it'll be picked on the same on the same log. Yeah, all the same log. It'll be picked, it'll be Soaked, picked, soaked, picked, soaked, picked, and then once the log kind of stops producing, it'll be thrown out. Um, the other stuff, these, these, the pom poms, the mai tai, they grow on the exact same substrate as the shiitake. Yeah. But they grow out of the bag. The pom poms are about the easiest. We just poke a hole in them, and in about 18 days, we have mushrooms. Hmm. Mai tai take the longest. They take about 70 days. That's the reason they're the most expensive also. Oh, I see. Um, then the, the different, this is actually a type of oyster. It's growing on a corn cob based substrate, and this is also a sterile system. Um, it's an automated system that we bought from Japan uh, to grow um, originally this type of mushroom, beach mushrooms and enoki mushrooms. Um, we don't grow them anymore. We just do the, uh, the royal trumpet. Uh, oysters grow on a different substrate. They grow on cottonseed hulls and, and straw. Okay. And they're just a pasteurized substrate. They're not sterile. Uh, and oysters are also very aggressive and they're very fast, so it doesn't have to be totally clean. They'll, they'll overtake most of the uh, competitors. And these you can pick uh, two to three times also. How many of these do you have in one of the uh, mushroom houses? Well, in our setup, we have a 68-foot house by 68 by 30, and we have 900, um, probably average about a thousand logs in a house. Wow. Um, Who are you with? Are you with Phillips? Yeah. The shiitake would be in a house about the same size, but they have a lot more shelves, and you can get. Um, Probably six thousand in a house. Um, go ahead. Yeah. You especially you grow that kind of mushroom. We grow that kind of mushroom also, also, but it has to be in a dedicated house. So, if, if, like, you can't have a half a house of, of that type and a half a house of shiitake. So you have to do a full house because they like different, slightly different. Do you have conditions. Kind of separate house for all these different yep. varieties. Yep. Now, we grow actually, we don't grow much of this, so we kind of fudge it and we go half and half and we'll grow, we'll grow these three actually in the same house because they like kind of the same, the same stuff. But the oysters like a little colder, shiitake's a little warmer and a little drier. Oysters need really high humidity, you know, so they don't cohabitate very well. The whites are very finicky about humidity in the, in the air. Um, so they would not get along with the shiitakes because they need a little bit more humidity, a little warmer. So everything's kind of separated. The only mushrooms I remember from years back was the white button mushroom. Yeah. How does this all involve? Uh... Well, it started uh, mainly everything. Everything here originally people grew, you know, got from the wild. Yeah, right. And then with culture maintenance and things like that, we can keep it in a spawn lab for years and years. So once you get a good culture, you split it, split it, split it, split it, um, and keep growing on it for years as long as it's maintained well. Um, Fujian so, province in China, 800 BC. That's right. Where going to so yeah. They were probably the first example of cultivated mushrooms. Yeah. People were picking them before that, but actually making a farm out of it, they claim in this, they got a big place in China where they claim were the first cultivated mushrooms. So that's their claim in 800 BC. So it's a big statue of the, uh, China's the largest mushroom producer in the world. 
Yeah, yeah. So they eat it too. They, they, they don't just most produce it, they eat it too. They yeah. don't uh, they don't export much except uh, a little bit to Japan and actually they hurt Japan's uh, Japan had a pretty big shiitake uh, industry and China kinda of put them out of business. Um, we see a lot of Chinese stuff coming into this country, believe it or not. They'll ship it over. Yeah. Fresh. They'll put it on a boat in a in a cooler box in a plastic bag. And, and what they do is they partially dry it down before they ship it. And they get a 30 come, day shelf life on these after it hits the dock. Yeah. 30 days. And that's California. Yeah. On this coast, they may only get about So it's, it's, hurt, it's hurt California mushroom production a little bit. What do you think about food products that come from China a little bit in the area? Yeah, well, because that, I don't we're know working what on that. Doing. I don't know what they're doing. Um, it, it's an issue because in this country, we have to jump through so many food safety hoops, it's not even funny. And the amount of money that the mushroom industry has spent in the last in the last ten years, say, but mainly in the last five years, to get up to snuff for what's it's not mandatory yet, but it's going to be mandatory. I mean, we've spent you know we just on our farm we've hired four full time people just to do our food safety drive um, you know program. And, no, no, but. The, the conditions in China are, as far as I've, I've seen, I've been there once, um, are nowhere near as neat and tidy as ours are. So, you know, that's our, that's our, our argument. You know, why the heck do, are these allowed to come in? And, you know, and we've got to do all this stuff. And they are sterilizing. How do we know that they're sterilizing? Well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Sterilizing is just so you get a, a healthy log. That has nothing to do with the problem. You could, you could get away with uh, a high temperature pasteurization, no problem. As long as you've got a fairly clean facility and you, and you maintain it well, you can, you can get away without sterilizing these things. And um, you'll get mushrooms. No matter where they grow, the mushrooms are not growing in a sterile atmosphere. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's just in a house with air ducts. We do filter the air a little bit just to keep some dust and things out. But it's once it's out of the bag, it's no longer sterile, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, like you can go to Chris Sears and you're right on the street. You're welcome. Yep. Would you like to give uh, a little bit of the history of Phillips mushrooms? Well, um, Phillips has been around for uh, about 80 years. It started, uh, they're in their third generation now. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Started out growing whites, and then um, after, I guess in the early 80s, they started to experiment with uh, shiitake, and then just grew the product line. Mm -hmm. so, do you have a favorite kind of mushroom to cook with? I do. I like I like the royal trumpet. Myself. How, is that one uh, easier or harder to pick than like the other mushrooms? Uh, it's very easy to pick. We just cut it right off the bottle. But uh, oh, I see. And everything's edible. The whole stem, the cap, mm. you slice it long ways, sauté it. Yeah. Just brown the edges. They're nice and crunchy. Yeah. They have good mushroom flavor. They don't have as much flavor as the shiitake or the maitake, but uh, they're they're darn good. Yeah. They would be my favorite. I've never seen these in the store. They don't have long shelf life, so oh, um, it's tough. If you go to a Wegmans, they'll probably have it, or a, or a specialty market. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the day these are picked, now, see, I brought this bag over here yesterday, and just in one day. Yeah. This, this I brought, I picked this morning, so it's still nice and white. Right. But just in one day, sitting out here, and it wasn't yeah. even very hot. I see. It's browned up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so once you pick it, and you know we keep our packing room pretty cool and 